tonight. On Kitchen Nightmares, Chef Ramsay heads to Brooklyn. Oh my God. To tackle the many problems of a 55-year-old restaurant. I've just had one of the most disgusting lunches I've ever had. Owner John is not only clinging to the past. It worked before. Why can't it work now? He is no longer running his restaurant. Do you have any idea that this is going on? He works primarily at the pizza oven. They weren't a fan of the egg cream. I don't know what they're doing over there. And he's unaware of what's happening. Where is John? Oh, my God. In the kitchen. I'm embarrassed to do some of the things that we do here. In the dining room. Look at this mess. Or in his storage. They're frozen molded. And as a result, the restaurant is a disaster. There's a man vomiting in the toilet now. It's a Kitchen Nightmares inspection that will have you in it's shock. Cool. It's off! Conditions are so bad. We could possibly kill them. Kill someone. A customer pays the price. Call an ambulance. Oh my god. Get ready for an emotional roller coaster as Chef Ramsay tries to save a defiant owner. If I need you to tell me to put the key to the door, sure. I would have done that without you okay. coming here. From destroying his parents' legacy. I don't want to be here no more. What is that? You serve me rotten food. We could possibly kill them. Then wake up! You wake up! <coughs> Shut the place down! Get out of here! That is amazing! Thank you, Chef. In Brooklyn, New York, lies the historic neighborhood of Cobble Hill, a hip, thriving area and home to Sal's Pizzeria, run by John Esposito. My parents came here from Italy, and they took over this pizzeria in 1970. And at the age of 14, uh, I left high school to help my mom and dad run the business. This has become my life ever since. Hello, Sal, how can I help you? We ran the place very successfully. Thank you. By the 90s, we were able to purchase the restaurant next door. Hello, how are we doing? Welcome to Maria's. Thank you. My mom became sick. She got diagnosed with cancer. And we thought the right thing to do was to name the room after my mom. That's why you have Sal's Pizza and Mama Maria's. His father passed away, his mom passed away. He was the only one in charge of everything. And as the years passed, it started to go down. We don't have that kind of volume of sales that we once had, and I can't figure out the reason why it dropped off. Where's the people? I've stayed the same, I haven't changed. They weren't a fan of the eggplant. I don't know what they're doing over there. John, as the owner, is supposed to be in charge of this whole place, including the kitchen, but he's usually up front making pizzas covered in, in flour. It's a nightmare, right? It is a fucking nightmare. The pizzeria and a restaurant are two different animals. That's like the accountant that thought it'd be cool to open a wine bar. Stop paying attention over here for a minute. Get in the kitchen. Really look at what's going on. John treats this place like his second home. He's got four kids that are always here running around the restaurant. It doesn't really look good for the restaurant. John is an extremely stubborn owner. All right, so this is the way we're going to set up the table. Listen, hold your rolls and tell me get down here. It's my restaurant. In his mind, the system has worked, but it really stopped working like 20 years ago. Cobble Hill used to be a very old school Italian neighborhood, but now we have much, much younger people moving in. Uh, a lot of people like to call them hipsters. Hey, sorry, uh, spaghetti doesn't taste quite right. I don't know what to tell you. It's a fresh tomato sauce. Throw this out. Am I going to put on plastic glasses, get a funky haircut, put an earring in my ear just to accommodate the new people? I'm not going to do that. How are things on this side? Not bad. Horrible. Really? Yeah. John is holding on to the past and to the way things were done when his parents ran the business. We didn't do anything tonight. We didn't even do a quarter of what we used to do. Any businessman would have said, enough is enough, pull the plug. But how do you pull the plug on family history? Pretty tough. Yeah. We gotta do something to boost these checks. This place, it's mom and dad. Losing one is like losing a parent again. They're not prepared to handle that. Mama Maria's. What is that? That is ghastly. Holes everywhere. That is not a good sign. Damn. My goodness me. Hello. How are you? Good, how are you? First name is? Fabio. Yeah, good to see you. I'm the manager here. That outside looks like an eyesore. Whose idea was that? The owner, he actually cut the letters out. Why? I guess because it was tearing and he just completed the whole thing. And the owner is? John. 
And he is where? Next door. He's responsible for, like, the pizzeria. So, two restaurants. Right. Mama Maria's I'm standing in. Right, and then there's Charles Pizzeria next door. Um, right, I'm gonna go meet the owner. Okay. Uh, thank you. No problem. Wow. So, Sal's Pizzeria. John? There he's there. How are you? Very well, thank you. How are you? Good, thank you. Excellent. So, are you filling in today? Someone phoning sick? N I Peter pretty much make, is make he sick? the pizzas. Yeah, I always work the front of the counter. Oh, so you're pizzas. behind there constant? Yeah. Wow, how long have you been making pizzas? Since I'm um, 10 years old. That's incredible. I got confused with a hideous canopy outside. Was that you who cut holes in the canopy? Uh, actually, the wind did that. The wind did that? Yeah. Anyway, come round. Let's have a, a catch-up. OK, first of all, give me a little insight, the history. My mom and dad had a pizzeria, and my father and my mother did all the cooking in the back. Sure. By the 90s, my mom got sick. She came down with cancer. She passed first. I'm sorry, he's no longer with me. Wow. So that's why it has two different names. Right. Mom and dad, Sal and Maria. Right. Combined restaurants, what is the number one problem here? We're not busy. You're not busy? Uh, there's more competition in the neighborhood, and uh, we're struggling. We're struggling to keep the doors open. It's a hard pill to swallow. Yeah, I can see that. Um, I'd like to meet and find out what's going on here. It's very uncomfortable for me to sit here right now and ask for help. Thank you. I'm not feeling who I am. I feel weak. Oh, hello. Hello. How are you? Good, how are you? And this is? Lori. Lori, nice to see nice you. Nice to meet you. What do you do? I'm a waitress. Excellent. What's wrong with the restaurants? Um, lack of leadership. Uh, John's a little frantic, chaotic, um, usually very busy in the pizzeria. John has been here forever. So you would think John would know how to run this place, but he doesn't want to change anything because this is what his parents knew before they passed away. Homemade pastas. Pasta made daily on the premises. All the pastas made fresh on a daily basis? Yep. OK, um, start off with the tortellini patata. OK. I've got to try the spaghetti meatballs. Spaghetti meatballs. Margarita, please. OK. Thank you. Wow. Mangalea Reganata, second course. You got the tortellini patate. The food is not good here, but it's not my food. I'm serving it the same way we always serve it. Oh, boy. I think the chef Ramsey's going to have a heart attack when he sees what goes on around here. Oh, my god. Oh, hello. Hi, how are you? I'm very healthy. How are you? Good. I'm Fran. I'm good. Fran, nice to see you, darling. What'd you do? I oh, just showed the desserts. Oh, OK. Let's, let's have a look. Show oh. me. Wow. So they showcase the desserts. Mmm. So this is our desserts. Everything's made here fresh on premise. Right. So, jeez. Uh, what is that? It's butter. It's, oh, it's butter? Yeah, just to display Ooh. as the ice cream. And that, uh, that mold on there, you show that? No, the butter's on top, so it covers that. And that bit there? Yeah. And Fabio, you're the general manager, right? So you've got no idea of this. We're presenting those moldy bits of shit. And it's stuck with butter on top. Now, That's those what? are just for display. Hold on, hold on. For... Because they're for display, you've got the right to cake them in mold and serve customers a display that's full of mold. So are we supposed to, like, put a fresh one every day so we can throw it out? Are you kidding me? What do you think? I think that, you know, as long as it's... I mean, it's fresh, it's good. I mean, are but you... I wouldn't... But I wouldn't... Are you... I mean, have you lost the plot? No, I haven't. No. It's changed yeah, colours four times, and it absolutely reeks. All I'm saying is that this is for display. We're not serving it. So, do the customers deserve a display that's full of shit? Oh, my God. He's ripping into him. He's ripping into him, man. Look at this mess. Oh, my God. That, it must be two months old. It's probably a few days old. A few days? Uh, we don't serve it. It's for presentation. I'm aware you're not serving it. Thank fuck. Gold star. Congratulations on that one. That's, uh, that's a big breakthrough with you. That's why you're here. Excuse me? That's why you're here. I'm here to tell you that that's shit, and you no. shouldn't be presenting it. No, you don't know the difference between mold and fresh? It's for presentation only. Give me two seconds. I need to clean my hands. I'm caked in mold. I've got disgusting butter, and I've got fucking hands full of pus. Oh, my God. Oh, Christ almighty. You got Tylenol coding? No. <laughs> He's gonna come throw it at us. I'd rather him throw it at us than we serve it to him. The patata? Thank you. You're welcome. I don't know. 
It's bland. I mean, really bland. And visually, it looks like someone's just eaten that whole dessert tray. And it shot out twice as quick as it went in. Laurie, it's just bland. I mean, really bland. I'll let them know. And this is frozen because there's a grainy potato flavor inside that... I don't think anything's frozen here. Yeah. So the tortellini aren't frozen. I'll double check. Thank you, though. Uh-oh. He said it was very, very bland. He asked if the, um, the tortellini were frozen. I wasn't sure if they were frozen or not. He's right. All our pasta's fresh frozen. That's the most mind-boggling thing in this place. We make everything and then freeze it. Chef. The tortellinis are frozen. Oh, they are frozen? They are. So you advertise you're making it daily, but you freeze it daily. Something's wrong big time. Thank you, though. Wow. They said the tortellini is frozen. I, can't, I, I, can't, I didn't even know this shit. Me either. I thought everything was, like, fresh. It makes no sense. What, to make it fresh and then freeze it? And then freeze it. It makes no sense. Does anyone clean here? Fabio. How often is this place cleaned? I have no idea. You've got no idea when this place was last cleaned? They don't have a cleaning crew. All these? I'm not sure I'll have to ask John. What's that smell in here? <laughs> ah, shit. Fuck. <laughs> That's the smell. Oh, my God. What in the fuck? Damn. It was a little bit of a payback because he just finished tearing me apart. I thought that was a little bit of karma. Did I get you? Yeah. yeah. Where in the fuck did all that come from? They all flooded it. Who watered the plants this morning? John? Yeah. They're full of water. Somebody watered the plants. Someone's doing a great job at watering plants but not changing desserts. Man! Wow. Now I'll pay for any dry cleaning, right? OK? Fuck me. The spaghetti and meatballs. I would say enjoy, but I know better. Spaghetti and meatballs? Spaghetti and meatballs. Um, fresh meatballs or frozen? Frozen. Oh, come on. Everything is frozen? Look at that now inside, how rubbery it looks, even before tasting it. Man, look at that, how dry that is. Dry. Disgusting frozen meatballs. Uh oh. Meatballs are frozen, rubbery, and dry. He's right. Okay. Every product we use in here is frozen. When I first started here, we cut up a leg of veal, and I'm still waiting to use it. And here's your pizza. For a margarita pizza, it's very greasy. Oil slicks in here. Doesn't like the pizza either. It's too greasy. That's just full of grease. Laurie, the pizza's grease is anything. But what concerns me, John's behind the bar, all this shit food's coming out, and I want him to taste what he's sending me, because I'm a little bit miffed to why I'm here if no one's caring. Okay. Please? Sure. Wow. He said the pizza is greasy and that you should be tasting everything that before it gets sent out to him. Bullshit. I've had enough. Oh, boy. Oh, my God. I know. I've had enough. I've had enough. I've had enough. I've had enough. After being disappointed by bland frozen food and greasy pizza at Brooklyn's Mama Maria's, a joke. Chef Ramsay heads to the kitchen looking for an explanation. I don't want to talk to this guy when he comes in here. Come on, everybody outside. Uh, introduce me to who's who. This is Joe. Joe. This is Oscar. Joe. How are you? Hi, how are you? Come through. Valentino. Hello, sir. Valentino, how are Very you? Good to meet you. Likewise, good to see you too. Um, I don't know where to start. I've just had one of the most disgusting lunches I've ever had. I stopped a dessert tray full of moldy desserts and the tortellini, grainy, bland, and the potato was just dreadful. The meatballs, frozen, dry, solid. Yes, they're disgusting. I don't eat them. But you can't make meatballs every day. You get 20 pounds of chopped meat, you make the meatballs, and you freeze the rest. Do you know how long it takes to make five pounds of meatballs? 
10 minutes. It's what we've done all our lifetime. I haven't just started this yesterday. The meatballs are always done. For the week. You should get away with it, 1967. It's 2012, John. Does anyone have standards here? We're not in control of the menu. Whose menu is this? This is my menu. I'm embarrassed to do some of the things that we do here. Are you kidding me? We make pasta fresh and we freeze it. Like, are you crazy? But why are you doing it? I don't have a choice. Who's stopping you? The menu. My menu. Why don't you listen to this man? He's spoken more sense in the last five minutes than anybody has since I've been here. Do you listen to your staff? They're not paying my bills. I'm the guy paying the bills. Oh, because you make the pizza, and so they can't have a voice. You should be nowhere near this business. I don't agree with you. I think we should close the doors. I don't think this man actually gives a shit. Can I, I didn't, I didn't can, call you can, because can I, I want to put the key to the door. I, if I need you to tell me to put the key to the door, sure. I would have done that without you okay. coming here. It worked before. Why can't it work now? But you're running on nostalgia. It stood still. And yet, outside these four walls, the whole neighborhood has overtaken you. You're in love with the memories, John. I don't know what to say. Thank you for your honesty. I need a shower. I fucking stink of plant juice. I'm not going to close the doors just because he said he said so. I don't agree with him. 100%. Game on. All right? Within a short time of his arrival, Chef Ramsay has discovered that the staff may actually know more than the owner. What are we supposed to do? So we didn't fucking make these recipes. And now he's eager to see how the team functions in a dinner service. Oh, my god. Yeah. Hello. How are we doing? Welcome to Marley's. Second course, Papa Del tomato sauce. Our boxes, pizza boxes, grande before, rapido. What's going on down here? Hello. Business running as normal, John. Yes, this is. Yes. Yeah. If I wasn't here, you'd be doing exactly the same. Exactly the same. No difference. Portobello clam, I need that first. So that's what John would normally do, just all night on the pizzas out there. Yeah. I mean, he doesn't come in here, he just stays out there all night. He's afraid. I think he's afraid of the kitchen. He's afraid of the I kitchen? I think so, sir. He owns the place. I know. It's crazy. Well, I mean, it's insane. As John seems content to pound away at the pizza oven... Margarita sauce, margarita! The kitchen, led by Joe, is pushing out food at a steady pace. Pick it up! Here is your pasta. But that doesn't mean the fast-arriving food is pleasing the customers. How's everything? Um, the shells are, like, frozen. Okay. It looked like it's freezer burned. All I got was rosemary. All I taste is rosemary. I don't taste any of the sauce. Or I found a bone in my sauce. What's that? A bone. A bone. A bone. I'm a vegetarian. Sorry. Who's inside the sauce? Joe, two seconds. There's a bone in a rigatini, and she's vegetarian. And the tomato sauce, they put pork bones in it. What the fuck? She's vegetarian. That's how we do it every day. John is responsible for the methods that we use to produce the food. Get me John, urgently. He says, if you don't like it, leave. John, this, this is urgent now. A lady has just found a pork bone in the rigatini. We use to give the sauce over, we always, always added sausage, So sauce. you're serving pork bones? In the sauce to a vegetarian. Oh, Jesus Christ. That's how we prepare food for the last 40 years, and I don't see it being a problem. A pork sauce to a fucking vegetarian? It's the way we've always done our business. But you can't serve a vegetarian a pork sauce. Um, what the fuck is going on here? I don't know what. what... Had fucking enough. Had enough. Had fucking enough. Coffee, will that make it better? Are you okay? Because I can't hear you. Are you waiting for the uh, bathroom, buddy? No, um, my friend got sick. Is he vegetarian? No. No. What did he have? The lobster tail. Okay. And the lobster, he said, tasted um, funny. And the next thing I knew, he was sick. Okay. John, you're too sick? The gentleman will be sick of the box. Yeah. He had lobster, I had the mushroom, and then... Would you like a medical assistance? Would you like for me to call 911? Joe, pass me a lobster tail, please. 
I need one lobster tail. It's tough, right? Why well, you guys thrown up? He's in the bathroom when he's sick. Please show me exactly what you serve that customer. Yeah? Please. Thank you. Fucking hell. You all right? OK. Go. Chef, your lobster's ready. Thank you. John, come here, you. you. smell it. Seriously. Fishy. I can smell the ammonia. Yeah, you smell that? And that's what that man has just eaten. That's so... ammonia. That's what releases. When the body starts to decompose, yeah. it's been pulled apart and then decomposed. That's what makes it bad. Joe, just clarify something for me. We could possibly kill them. Kill someone. And whilst we're discussing this, and there's a man vomiting in the toilet now. I can't believe this is happening right now. It feels like shit to know that you got somebody sick. And it's the first time you've got your head out the dough. But it's John's responsibility no matter what, because John buys all the product that we use. Yeah, please. Should we call an ambulance? Yeah. Uh, it does not look well. Call an ambulance. Hi, this is Sal's Pizzeria. I need an ambulance. The customer's not feeling well. Your face is really flushed. Oh, my God. My worst fear is for anybody to get sick in my restaurant. Where's a shot of something? I need a shot. I need a shot of something. I got a guy vomiting. Oh, no, give, me, give me something. Give me quick. Whiskey? Vodka, vodka, vodka. If somebody came to your house and you cooked them a dinner, how would you feel he started puking all over the place? A guy had some lobster, and he has a reaction to it. The gentleman sit down. Oh, my God. So we just saw an ambulance come out? Yes. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Need to kill the cameras. Kill the cameras. It's dinner service at Mama Maria's. You all right? You OK. Go. One of the diners is feeling ill after eating a questionable lobster. It's not. Seriously, it's fishy. And that's what that man has just eaten. And the paramedics have just arrived on the scene. A guy had some lobster, and he has a reaction to it. The gentleman's sitting down. It's terrible for anybody to get sick on anything that you serve. You, you, I want to stop everything. Just close the fucking place down now. OK, so whatever's been served has been served. I do not want to serve. I do not want to serve anything else. Joe, shut it down. Come, come. Call to fucking vegetarians. Now this. I've had it. Just stop. Everybody stop, OK? Nothing else leaves this kitchen unless it's going in a garbage bag. OK, so. When I shut it down, they just kick everybody Just apologize, out. no check, deeply sorry, and we have a, an issue that I have to deal with. My apologies. OK. We need to close, go to the tables, tell everybody they need to go. No checks, just go. OK, close okay. them. So sorry, but we're going to close the restaurant down, too? So should we not eat this? Yes, don't eat it, just, no, don't, don't eat it, just. It. We're shutting okay. down. We are shutting down, I'm sorry. Am I going to get sick from the appetizer? Is no, that, no, is it that no. Kind of thing? Just they're not going to serve anything else. It's embarrassing to have paramedics walk into your restaurant and to have to shut down your restaurant because of that. Should we take his contact information or any kind of information like that? John, can I have a word? Yeah. Outside. <clears throat> John, tonight was beyond a disaster. Oh, I never expected this. Never in my wildest dreams. It's all humiliation. But it's not just bad food, John. It's bad practices that mean you're so detached from your business. You don't look like an owner. You don't sound like an owner. You're like a member of staff back there. Uh, you, you're right. But why? I don't know why. I don't know why. I just because I think I've been beat up too much. There's got to be some fight inside. There's got to be some. Listen, I am a fighter. I've been a fighter my entire life. I was thrown into this place because they needed to, they needed a, a, a horse, a donkey to run the place because they couldn't afford to hire people. They sacrificed my education and throw me in here. But you've given up. Come on. You're destroying yourself. Listen. Help me change. I will help you, but you have to understand. You cannot be a member of staff pounding dough. That's not right. You shouldn't be doing that. I do it because I love my family. And I want to provide for them. The best way I know how. Do you think they get enjoyment watching you kill yourself in there? John, come on. You have to take a big, long step back 
and stop running this place from a fucking pizza oven. No. <clears throat> I, I can't. I mean, no, emotionally, I can't. Why? I need to take a break. No, no, no. Listen, you're an owner. Hey, I can see the pain. I feel it. Let me tell you. I've got four kids of my own, and I know how hard it is. But I'm here for you. And I want you to win. Understand that. Man to man. I'm telling you. I want you to win. But you've got to listen. OK? We can do this, right? You do I want not. to do it. Good. Have fun We're going to start. Have fun with my okay. kids. Let's do it for them. OK? See you in the morning. Chef Ramsay may have pledged his help to John, but he needs to get a handle on everything before he can implement changes. So early this morning, he does a little research. Who is this? Bloody hell. Time to see how much frozen food there really is. Oh, God. This. Bloody hell, fettuccine. Penne. They said they had frozen food, but I certainly wasn't aware there was this much. Oh, my God. This goes on. It's endless. How much pasta's in here? Look at the colours. It's frozen badly. No date, no name. Look at it. Oh, you're kidding me. What is that? Sausage skin. I mean, honestly, look at this. Buckets of them. What's that? That's just out of two freezers. And look, there's more freezers down there. Oh, my God. You are kidding me. Chicken, freezer burnt. Oh, man, look at this. This must be five years old, this stuff. It's ruined. You can't cook that. Oh, my God. Oh, Jesus. This is a joke. Look at that. Oh, come on. Meatballs. This is ridiculous. They're frozen molded. What's that? Oh, God. No dates, no labels. Another freezer. Frozen vegetables, frozen pasta. My God. I don't even know what it is. An ice cream container. Some are filled with pasta shells. Look at this stuff. Freezing tiramisu. You are kidding me. Oh, that's eggplant. How many portions of food is here? Well, it's just endless. Oh, my God. Horrified by the amount of frozen food. Wow. Chef Ramsay is determined to give John and his staff... Unbelievable. ...a much-needed wake-up call. How are you today? Good. Shit day yesterday. Yeah. I've just spoken to Charles, the diner from last night. He got checked out this morning at the hospital. Totally fine, OK? Big breath of fresh air there, let me tell you. Yeah, I was yeah. really no, nervous. No, we okay? all were. We all were. Today, we start fresh. Fortunately, we are still a little frozen in the past. Come with me. Oh, boy. Let's go. Let me show you something. Come in. Wow. What the fuck is this? That's our menu. What do you think it is? This is our stuff. John, I've never, ever encountered anything like this in my entire cooking career. Ever. Never. If we had to not touch anything else in this kitchen and cook what we've got, you'd be open for the next 12 months and still not run out. Oh, my God. Wow. Come on. We have 40 stacks. That's like 400 pounds of chicken. Kentucky Fried Chicken probably doesn't have that much chicken on hand. John, do you have any idea that this is going on? Yes. It is. It's, it's amazing when you look at it. But I knew it was going on. Look at the meatballs. Freaking turn color. Hey, don't throw it at me. Come on, guys. There's more, Joe. I know. There's more downstairs. There's more. It, it pains me. You're right. There's no, there's no way around it. This is my, this is my fault. It's a sad truth. It is. 
Uh, it lies with me. This is my fault. I let this get out of, out of my grasp. Past glory, we used to do 10 cases of chicken in two weeks. I'm still buying like we were busy at that, at that level, and we're not. The restaurant is struggling as it is, but you're losing money twice as fast. Try to change something that's no. Is that true? He's trying to change, you're saying no? Yes. There's resistance to change. Yes. So that's another my big problem. Yes. Like I told you. I mean, you'll... look at this. How long do you think those have been special? When's this from? I, 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 I listen. I'm just it's asking. Not a, how, how long has that been yeah. here? Since my parents died. I don't want to take it down. No, I, I don't push the specials. It's just something, a memory so to then, me. The, but that's the really important issue, and you mustn't take this personally. You're still treating this business as if mom and dad are here. We have to let go. Throw it out. It's holding me onto the pants. But throw it out. No, I'm not asking to throw that out. Take, take it home. Take it home. No, John, I don't want to get upset, but you've got to understand. You've got to let go of the past. OK? Yep. Guys, get the shit out of here. John, okay. let's go. I am here to help you. But I can just see the pressure. I can feel no, it's not the me. frustration. I don't, I don't want to be here no more. Not that I don't want to be here. I don't want to be in this position no more. It's just sad. Just be in the air every day, working seven days a week. I don't know if I told you. I wasn't educated. My mom and dad threw me in here. I would come home from school, not to eat lunch, to serve lunch. How old? I was a kid, eight, 10, and this has been my life ever since. It's just sad to sit here every day, knowing what we used to do, and not be able to do what I used to do anymore. It's just, you're holding on to the wrong things. And I think deep down inside, you're just running scared. I don't want to be scared of no I want to fight with my wife. I sent my kids to camp. They were so happy that you were coming. My third child said to me, Daddy, Ramsey's going to fix everything. Then we get to spend more time together. Hey, you will. But you have got to let go of the past. It's your turn now. I am here to help you. Do you understand? But it's on one condition. You step away from that pizza day. I want a commitment that you're will, not going to jump will. behind there on the safety net. It's going to be hard. I just want a commitment from you that you're going to get your head out the dough. Yes, I will. Yes. Yeah? I yes. want to start making it, not pounding it. All right. Yeah. Let's do it. Let's do it. Can you hear what's going on out there? I hear it. I That's hear for it. a reason. I hope they're listening. It's going to be extremely hard not to fall back into your old habits, but I'm ready to, to, from today on, change my ways and move forward and not let that ever happen again. Chef Ramsay clearly feels for this owner and is now ready to reveal the first important change. First of all, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, good morning. Where are you? We hear you, but I don't see you. Don't worry about that. We are relaunching Mama Maria's. Excited? Yay. Yay. Good. Remove your blindfolds. Oh, my God. Oh, wow. Oh, that awning's gone. That's right. Totally the awning gone. has gone. Let me welcome you to the new sign. Mama Maria's. When I first arrived here, I saw a disgusting awning. Letters cut out, just hideous. This now is your first statement. It says a lot, first impressions. Let me tell you. Oh, yeah. I like it. It looks modern. I've made some minor changes inside. Minor? Trust me, when you walk through those doors, I think you're going to crap yourself. Let's go in. Come in. Please. Oh, wow. Holy crap. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Oh my god, oh this my is totally god. different. First of all, welcome to the new, bright, vibrant Mama Maria's. And my goodness, 
Does it scream Brooklyn? Oh, wow. Totally different. Oh. When I first came in here, it was resembling a restaurant that hadn't been touched in years. It was dark, it was grimy, and it had no life. We've got stunning turquoise walls that gives that nice, vibrant pop. The custom artwork done by a very talented artist painting the beautiful, historic Brooklyn Bridge above your fireplace. I like that. I think this is what Brooklyn wants and needs. We got rid of all the clutter that John just was holding on to. We have on the wall your parents in full-blown, stunning photographs, which is an amazing memory to hold on to. Oh, have a look at the uh, paper. That's her mom. Oh. <laughs> you didn't see that. No. <laughs> That's me serving the dog. I didn't notice the pictures. Never forget this day moving forward, a new beginning in the history of the stunning family-run Mama Maria's, let me tell you. This is my family. This is me. It was here in front of my eyes. I didn't see it. It's amazing. It's changing from old to new. What I let go of the past, the past is still here with us. And I got a new lease on life. Chef Ramsay's remodel of the restaurant is only part of his master plan. Come through, please. The overhaul of the menu is the real key to turning this Brooklyn eatery around. First of all, just take a look at the vibrancy. Looks great. Fresh. Yeah, that's yeah. what I want to, that's what I need. Right, menu. Starting off with a delicious bruschetta. It's done with a really nice chopped up mozzarella served with marinated tomatoes. Earthy, rustic, and charming. Brilliant and fresh. The mussels are just incredible. A great little appetizer to get the palate with juices flowing. The specialities of the house, the pizzas. Margarita, stunning, simple, delicious. You hit it on the head. Next to that, you've got the ozabuco, served in its cooking juices over mashed potato, gremolata, and a really nice, rich demi glace. I'm hungry. <laughs> You're hungry. That's a great sign. <laughs> Boss. John, what do you think? I'm excited. I'm You're excited? Right. Yeah. Here's the scenario. We have some very, very influential journalists and bloggers coming in. Everybody on their game. Yes, sir. Yes. One more thing, these little sprucing up. Got this for you especially. A nice. Hey. Beautiful <laughs> shirt. After 40 years, I'm going to take my colors off. That's right, because you're no longer a pizza boy. You are the owner. If I catch your head inside that pizza oven, I'll put it in permanently. <laughs> <laughs> and as I look at you now, right over your shoulder, I see your father looking down. How are you doing? Look, that's right. And you are going to run this business just like they did when they brought you into this world. You got it. Coming up. Let's go! It's the most important night in 20 years for Mama Maria. One mistake and we fall apart. Will John be able to lead his team to a successful relaunch? I ain't got time for this. Where is John? Or will he collapse under the pressure and take the restaurant with him? Son of a bitch. I'm not letting you sink the dining room. It's relaunch night. We've got some big hitters in tonight, yeah. And Chef Ramsay is determined to let everyone know that Mama Maria's is the new cool place to dine in Brooklyn. First off, Eat in Brooklyn, blogging website, dynamic. Blackboard Eats, blog. Great. Awesome. Right. We're going to impress them. Eat to blog are also joining us, followed by the New York Observer. Big one, absolutely big one. Getting nervous. You have got a powerhouse full of critics. Look how smart you are. Wow. Turn around, give us a spin. Whee! Amazing, amazing, amazing. <laughs> Let's go. Welcome to Mama Maria's. This is our brand new menu. Welcome to Mama Maria's, our relaunch, and I'm very proud of what we're doing now. Oh my God. We, um, that two tops come here, just recognize them. New York Observer, the guy with the notepad. Oh, okay. He's the man. 2.4 million readers. Don't tell me who they are, because I'll get nervous. No, I've just told you. You yeah. need to know who they are. Let's go, you can do it. It's tough taking on this new role. You know, it, it's not my makeup. I'll grab them. Okay. Two? Yeah. Right. I need to step away from that pizza counter and be more hands-on to make sure everybody's doing their job and doing it correctly. Table four, New York Observer. Yes. Okay. Okay, listen up. First course, minestrone and a Caesar. Got it. I need this risotto cavatelli, please. 30 seconds in the window. Good. While John may be in the unfamiliar role of leading his staff... How we're doing over here? Is the pizza's all done? There's another one coming. Mama Maria is off to a good start. Pick up lasagna, gnocchi, spaghetti meatballs. And customers are thoroughly enjoying the food. The gnocchi's delicious. I think the sauce is spot on delicious. But while Chef Joe continues to push dishes out in a timely manner... Muscles in the window, bruschetta in the window, let's go. It was a typical southern Italian red sauce joint, yeah. John seems to have forgotten that he is still needed in his new role as leader. I'm so hungry. Yeah, I really am. Table four in the window, let's go. 
It's a vlogger's table, guys. Let's go, rapido. It's very frustrating when I see dishes not leaving the window. There's no time for mistakes. I ain't got time for this. Where is John? Let's go. Get me John. Let me get him. Are you serious right now? Son of a bitch. Yes. There's a guy walking around here with a white jacket, blonde hair. Oh, for fuck's sake. John. Yes, sir. So you can't just favor two guys at the bar. You've got to be everywhere. Right, right. In and out. We're yeah. in the middle of service. I'm not letting you sink the dining room. No. This place no. is full of some of the most influential, I, 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 influential bloggers. I hear you. Step up. Period. That's right, End of story. That's right. We have to encourage. Don't stop. You cannot stop. We're going to communicate with our team. Still got VIP tables out there. OK, the stuff is right I'll over take here. It out I'll take it out, Tom. OK, beautiful. Let's not drop our heads. Let's bounce back, OK? Here you go, guys. Thank you. Oh, I'm so happy. Sorry about this service. We're trying our best. We're trying to keep up, and we're trying to do whatever we can. This is the first time John was acting like the owner he is tonight. You're doing great. You're doing great. All right. Keep it up. And that's exactly what Mama Maria needs. This looks awesome. He smells Yum. This is delicious. Let me know when that margarita is ready, please. I need that margarita. So, guys, how did everything go? The spaghetti and meatballs were They're delicious. Awesome. Absolutely totally spectacular. Awesome. Thank you. Well, cheers to pizza. We'll definitely be coming here again. Great job. Well done. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Good night, guys. John. Listen, you are one hard-working, honest guy. Thank you. I feel I was living in a shell. I'm coming out of that shell. Kiss. That shell is broken. Kiss. And I've got to be honest with you. You hit it, man. You hit it right on the head. Here's my memories. Mom and Dad are here. Yeah, they're here. They're still and here. so they are looking down. And they, right now, are proud. You no, have got proud. the door open. Thank Grab you. it. Just go forward. Don't I go back. No, no, no. I'm not going backwards. I refuse to go backwards. Kiss. One thing I remember my father was his leadership, and that's what I'm going to continue doing. Thank you so much. Take care of yourself. I know what I need to do. And there's more to come of Mama Maria's in the future. For the last 55 years, this restaurant has belonged to John's parents. And even after they sadly passed away, he remained a pizza maker. But tonight, he was an owner. This restaurant now belongs to John and John only. And I'm truly, and I mean truly rooting for this Brooklyn underdog. How much water can be put in one plant pot? Ah, shit. God bless pizzas. After Chef Ramsay left... Welcome to Mama Maria. John has kept his promise of running his business away from the pizza counter. I need a bowl of grated cheese, please. A bowl of grated cheese. Mama Maria's has already generated a ton of positive buzz from bloggers and websites. It's really good. Thank you. I hope from Chef Ramsay we've come a long way. And this 55-year-old restaurant is on its way back to being a fixture in Brooklyn once again. Tonight on Kitchen Nightmares, Chef Ramsay heads to a beachside eatery in a town called Hull. It's ridiculous! But quickly finds himself in a hellish situation. Oh my god, the salt are raw! A husband and wife team have lost their passion, not just for the restaurant, but for each other as well. There's an indent on the couch from where he sleeps. The husband is drowning at work. Whoa, come on. While the wife prefers to avoid it. What's Lisa doing? I'm going to go get a martini. And that's just the beginning. The food is horrific. Bloody hell. God, that's dreadful. And the kitchen is disgusting. Oh, wow. Look at the mess of this place. And the staff is ready to mutiny. Doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about. Find yourself a new bar manager. Can Chef Ramsay pull these owners' heads out of the sand? Someone fucking man up! Or will the restaurant and the marriage be forever lost at sea. You can solve this. Close the shop. What is that? You're serving rotten food. We could possibly kill them. Then wake up! You wake up! <coughs> Shut the place down. Get out of here! That is amazing. Thank you, Chef. Hull, Massachusetts, a quaint beachside town located just 10 miles from the southern tip of Boston. This is where you'll find Barefoot Bob's, opened in 2004 by husband and wife team Mark and Lisa Caradonna. Lisa and I have always been in this industry, and you know we decided if this is what we want to do, then we have to go out and buy our own restaurant. Welcome to Barefoot Bob's. We opened the doors to a great crowd. Hi, guys. 
I think we have a table left. And we thought, wow, it's just always gonna be like this. This is gonna be great. And then winter hit Hull. Where is everybody? Our summer business is not enough to carry the other seven months. Once October hits, it drops off to almost 10% of your summer business. So just we're behind, constantly behind. I don't have any money. Oh no, oh no. With business rapidly dwindling, Mark figured he would save some money by getting rid of the chef and taking over the kitchen. All right, you got a popcorn shrimp by itself. Leaving Lisa the responsibility of supervising the front of house. You Okay, you and Jess are outside. No, I'm in. Me and Jess are in the outside. <laughs> Biggest problem in the restaurant right now would definitely have to be Lisa. What's Lisa doing? I'm gonna go get a martini. What? Gotcha. <laughs> Mark's in the restaurant at least 10 or 12 hours a day, seven days a week. Mark, let me know if you need anything and I will avoid you. Most of the time, Lisa is on the beach, down the Cape somewhere, or when she is here, she kind of leaves a big tornado behind her and goes out the door, and next thing you know, she's gone again for the weekend. All right, I gotta leave for a few minutes, so don't look good. And it's sad because this is his life. He's so stressed out. We all fear that he's going to have a heart attack. That sucks. The poor man is so tired. You can just see it. You can see the stress in his face. I feel horrible for Mark because he wants to make this restaurant work. And since it's sinking, their marriage is sinking. Mark and I's relationship has been better. I know I love you. Let's just say there's an indent on the couch from where he sleeps. If this restaurant were to close, I don't know if my marriage to my wife would survive. In order to hear both sides of the story as to what the restaurant's problems really are. Hi, Lisa. Hi. Chef Ramsay has decided to meet with owners Lisa and Mark separately. How are you, big man? It's awful. Everything has just been awful. It's been brutal. Let's go back to the beginning. When we got married, it was, it was marrying my best friend. It was kind of our dream to always do this. So we found this place, had potential. It was a, you know, kind of we wanted to give it our vibe and take a shot at our dream. What was it like when you opened? It was fantastic. Mm -hmm. Both did front of the house, and we flocked in. What happened next? We didn't know how Where to judge went? the winters. We didn't know what it was going to be like. The first, you know, October came around when Oh my God, where is everybody? The business has been crippled, and now we don't have any money. So I had to basically go into the, into the kitchen, and I've always been front of the house. While I was focusing on that, the front of the house really took a beating. Where was Lisa at this point? She was backing off. She hasn't been too active in the front of the house right. for a while. And that's, that's, therein lies the problem. Help me understand your role in a nutshell. How would you describe it? I come in, and I do the books, the receipts, a little bit of everything. Mm -hmm. I mean, hands on. She believes that she's doing a lot. She comes in in the morning, a couple days a week. That's really it. She's in two days a week. You're in uh, seven. Seven days a week. Yeah, it's it's this place requires me to be here. I have to work twice as hard because she doesn't. And I'll say something I'm like, you know, th this is just really fucking awful. And she's like, well, I know. I was angry when I went to the gym. I see myself struggling, and I don't know why she's not jumping in to help. Did you talk to Mark? No. No. You can't talk. Rather than voicing it, mm -hmm. we'll just, just be pissed off about it instead. Have you fallen out of love with her? No. Has she fallen out of love with you? I don't know. What would happen if the restaurant closed? That would be, that'd be catastrophic. I don't know if our marriage would, how, how that would be. You know, that scares me. You. I'm Jessica. Jessica. Nice to meet you. Likewise, good to see you too. Chef Ramsay is going to have a lot to say about Lisa. I think that she thinks she's a major asset to the restaurant, when a lot of times she's one of the major downfalls to the restaurant. Please, okay, if great. you would. Of course. Um, what is the big underlying problem with this restaurant? It's Lisa. Mm -hmm. It is. She has it in financial ruins. And why she put it in financial ruins first? I feel like Lisa takes a lot of um, vacations. Vacations? A lot of vacations. Really? Mm-hmm. Wow. Mm-hmm. If somebody doesn't come in and confront Lisa, the restaurant's gonna go under. Can I start you with something to drink? 
Um, what the fuck's this? That's the menu. Seriously? Yes. It's massive. It is. Wow. These things are dirty. Um, is there any chance I could have a clean menu? Absolutely. Thank you, Dave. Mm. Guys, I need a clean menu like 10 minutes ago because you won't even look at this menu. What? So Are you kidding me? You can feel it. There's not a thing it on is. it. It is. It's filthy. Where? She's not here consistently enough to see how stuff runs anymore. There you go. And I think she's in for a rude awakening. This is not even fun. Thanks, Danny. Oh, that's been wiped. Yes. OK, let's start with, uh, is this a typo? Buffalo chicken skins? No. It's fried chicken with buffalo sauce on top. I know, I get that, skins. but then you've got buffalo chicken skins again. Oh, yes, that is a typo. <laughs> uh, did you know that was on there? Yes. Lisa did notice right after they were printed and just never fixed. I suppose for, obviously, locals that are slightly double vision. <laughs> OK, um, let's go for the uh, Bob's Big Boy platter. OK. Um, anything you'd recommend, darling? Um, the lobster roll. I'll taste it, yeah. OK. I've got to go for the chowder. OK. Perfect. Thanks, Tony. You're welcome. There you go, Mark. Chef, ordering in. OK. Hi. All right. I didn't have the formal training, but I like to think that I can hold my own. Whoa, too much. Oof. These plates are filthy dirty. I mean, literally caked in dust. Jessica? Yes? Darling, when was the last time these plates were taken down and cleaned? Um, when did we open? Eight years ago? Yes. You've never taken them down since you've been here? I don't believe so. Wow. My God. Lisa, he's up against the window pulling all the knickknacks down that were all, like, nasty and dusty. He's wiping them all, like, with his hands right now. Inchy's thick. Inchy's thick. Damn, he's observant. <laughs> Yes. What is up? Thank you. This is the big buoy. Wow. And it comes with fries and onion rings. Bloody hell. It just cascades off the plate. What's that? A scallop, a small one. That's a scallop. Yes. How rubbery that is. I know. Honestly. They were sent back earlier the same because they were I too mean... chewy and tough. Wow. It's disgusting. Uh, yeah. It's just dumped on here. Do they season anything? No. Bloody hell. Yeah, I'll bypass that, darling. OK. Otherwise, I'll need a bypass. OK. That was a big boy disappointment, let me tell you. Mark, the fries are soggy, and he said he will bypass, because if not, he's going to need a bypass. Close. Well, let's keep in mind, he comes from a place where they think scones are delicious. <laughs> I don't think Lisa is taking things as serious as I am. And that's the problem. Oh, all right. Let's do this again. Good luck. All right. This is the last one. OK, Grace. So. Thank you. Yes. How do you eat this? Where'd you go? Where'd you go? How much lobster is in there? Let's see if I can put the lobster back together. There's the claws. No wonder this place is losing money. Jessica, have you seen how much lobster is in this roll? Mm hmm Look at mm -hmm. all that. I know. It's a whole lobster. There's more. Lobsters don't have six claws. Bloody hell. Does every sandwich have that in there? Yes, it's typically a, a pound, a little over a, a pound. A pound? Yes. That should be the whole weight of the lobster, not the actual weight of the meat. The portion sizes of everything are huge. That's part of the problem. Mm hmm Nothing toasted, soggy. Disgusting. Uh, darling, I'm done. Yes. You just show uh, Mark that I will. roll. Thanks, darling. Thank you. I'm holding on for my chowder. <laughs> Why? What's the matter with that? This is larger than a regular lobster. What? This, he said that the total weight of a lobster should be a pound, not the meat in itself. He said this is where you lose any money. I think Lisa not being around has drained Mark and it makes a difference on the food. What else sucks? A lobster roll sucks. What? Yeah, it's too much lobster. I've never heard anyone complain about too much lobster. Well, It's like having too much money. <laughs> Mind blown. Here's your chowder. OK. All right. Thanks, honey. You're welcome.
Wow. Ay, ay, ay. Flowery, bland, no clams to be seen anyway. I mean, this is New England. That's what hurts. Jessica. You don't look impressed. Just have a little taste in there for me, please. Oh, it's very thick. It's flowery. It is. I wouldn't even paste my fucking wallpaper with that. Um, God, that's dreadful. Yep. There's just bland, I love Mac tasting. gloopy fucking glue. Yeah, it's not good at all. Mark, come taste this, please. He said it tastes like wallpaper. He wouldn't paste his walls with it. That's my spoon. It's thick. It's thick. Yeah. Yeah. Chris, it's thick. The scary part is, I thought all our food was good. Oh my god. What am I gonna do? Coming up. Oh my god. Things go from bad to worse as Chef Ramsay discovers. You kill everybody! A place so disgusting. Who can be that dirty? He's ready to throw in the towel. Close the shop. And he's not the only one. This isn't gonna work. Find yourself a new barman. After being disappointed by Barefoot Bob's classic New England dishes. Where is everybody going? In the kitchen. Could you um, just get them out for me, please? Chef Ramsay is ready to okay. share his view with the kitchen staff. Chris, Mac, and the owners. Come over. And uh, are you the chef? I'm the sous chef. First name? Chris. Chris, good to see you. Nice to meet you. Uh, I don't know where to start. I mean, I'm seriously embarrassed. I mean, guys, the lobster roll. But even I don't put one third of that lobster in my lobster roll. I mean, everybody loves, I mean, I... So this is surprising for you. No. Just, it was just a mess. Clam chowder. Who puts that together? That's nice. on me, but... I don't know what you're talking about. You consider that bowl of shit to be a representation of your restaurant. I couldn't even find a clam in mine. And that's just a bowl of soup. Problem with the recipe, where's it gone? It's in my head. Oh, it's in your head. One of those fucked up recipes. Apparently. Yeah. Well, congratulations. That's what you said. You can stand there with the arrogance and all the bravado in the world. OK. But when something shit, chef, then we'll fix it. that it's shit, then we'll fix it. I don't think you care about No one's told it. me it was shit. I'm not going to stand there and kiss your ass. I didn't ask you to. Well, I'm upset. But you seem to be content to get paid to serve shit. Does anyone have any standards in here? I do. Lisa, were you serving food like this eight years ago? I don't feel qualified to comment on what's coming out of the kitchen. That would be luck. Right now, this restaurant is a waste of an ocean view. But you can solve this, you know that. Close the shop. I'm lost for words. With Chef Ramsay exposing a lot of our problems, it's overwhelming. With little time to get over the brutal criticism from Chef Ramsay. That was awful. Lisa and Mark prepare for dinner service. Stay ahead of the game, boys. And with it being summertime, How are you doing? Barefoot Bob's is filling up quickly. Would you guys like to start with an appetizer? Pop our chip. Yeah. OK. Uh, Lisa. No, you just host this. Uh, so just... Kind of just overseen. Overseen. OK, good. And um, who's that gentleman with a cat on behind the bar? That's Robbie. Robbie. That's my brother. Oh. Holy crap. Jessica. Yes. Is that a crystal ball on the table? Yeah, she's a psychic reader. Oh. It's kind of like a promotion to bring people in. And does she charge? Yeah, she gets paid through the restaurant. Oh, wow. It's a little odd, I have to admit, that there's a psychic in a tiki restaurant reading your palm. Wow. Hello, how are you? Hi, good, how are you? Yeah, very well, thank you. I've never seen a her psychic oh. before. Amazing. And where did you train? Um, I've always wanted to do it, and then I just started reading, and I learned that things were coming true that I was thinking. What was the first fortune you predicted? Um, my girlfriend was trying to get pregnant, and, okay. um, and I told her I saw a girl, and she got pregnant with a girl. I mean, the girl boy, 50-50, so it's not that impressive. However, I've got some questions about this restaurant. Could you help me? Okay. Can this restaurant survive in the next six months? You're asking me my psychic opinion on that? Opinion like or prediction? Because you're confusing me now. All right, I'm going to look at the cards. Oh, my gosh. 
well, this says that there's a kink in the system that's not working. Uh, See, there's like a breakup, like a break, like a literal like shatter. Okay. Something needs to split up. Something okay. needs to be let go of. Like the owners. <sighs> Possibly. Oh boy, this is literally a divorce card. Wow. And is this imminent? Are we talking in the next six months, three months, three days? Honestly, it feels like it's a process. There's a lot of forgiveness that needs to happen, but it feels like it is possible. So a happy ending. But if they can do the work that they right. need to do, right? Here we go, bar food. Oh, come on, yeah. Four sliders. Send it, send it, send it. Bye bye. All right, fried scallops, Santa Fe egg rolls, full of chowder. Oh dear. Um, does food normally get thrown out of the kitchen that fast? Yeah. yeah. It, it normally. normally comes out at a good pace. Right. And um, is Lisa normally working like this? Um, Lisa's not really here most of the time. Really? Ever? Very rarely. Wow. But everyone seems to be tiptoeing over this situation because I don't think everyone actually understands like, how much shit's on his shoulders. Oh, yeah. It gets very frustrating that Lisa's not here while Mark is here every day busting his butt. Everything's dependent on him, and it's just so much stress on him that's unnecessary. It should be balanced out between the two of them. The Russians beat me into a pole. Oh, yeah. He's had heat strokes. He's sad. Really? Yeah. I mean, Lisa can't help out a bit more. It's very sad. There's just no words to describe how bad I feel for him, because he's killing himself here. Thank you, Dominique. No problem. How is everything? Is there something wrong? Yeah, I'm overcooked. Overcooked a little too well done. This is like all dough and no filling. I can send it back. While Mark quickly pushes food out to the dining room. I don't like it. It tastes terrible. Customers are returning the favor and pushing it right back into the kitchen. Mark, these just got sent back because they're cold on the inside. What? No. Yeah, it's cold. OK. They want a new order. Yeah, it's coming right now. Mark. Oh, no. Can I have an order of chicken tenders because they don't like their chicken parm, please? Right. Yeah, I know. Two minutes. There's the month's profit. Turkey tip side chili. Whoa, come on. Okay. Now that Chef Ramsay has observed the pattern of fast food followed by fast returns. This pizza just got sent back. He decides to do an examination of the food storage. This fridge is dreadful. Wow. Chicken breast. Oh my god, just dumped in there. Not even taken out of the bag, that's how lazy they've become. And the whole fridge is not even chilled, it's warm. There's not a decent temperature on the floor here. What is that? Unbelievable. Pork belly in a carrier bag on the floor. Next to the pork belly, you've got cooked chicken. It's actually hot inside, just festered in there. That's sat next to the pork belly, you've got cooked chicken. Cooked chicken, raw pork. Jesus Christ. What the fuck is that? Some form of chili. Ay, ay, ay. And I'm Salmon. That was the last one. Excuse me. Hello. You and you, come here. Look. That oh, is a pork. Oh, what? That's yeah, pork, pork fat. fat. Just hold that two seconds. That's next to this. Fucking wings. And the top is soaking wet because it's fucking full of condensation. And this, who grabs that out there and doesn't think about changing the fold? Who could be that dirty? Chili? Chili. Shit round the outside. Look at the mess of this place. It's fucking ridiculous. Someone fucking run up. Young man, you are running a business. Hot wings next to fucking raw pork. You'll kill everybody. After seeing food constantly come back. All right, this pizza just got sent back. Chef Ramsay headed to the walk-in, and what he found was simply disgusting. Hot wings next to raw pork. You kill everybody. Are these fridges out here behind the line the same way? After a service, they're probably dirty. Show me. I didn't realize it was this bad. And that's a pretty awful feeling. What the fuck? What is that? It's a it was a pizza. It right? was a it's pizza. Old. What is that one? How old is that one, then? This one, that one's got to go. Will you seriously cook that for a customer? Can't. And this one? I mean, look at it. Count how many pieces are here, please. Hey, and for me, this is money now. 25. 25. What are you expecting? A cruise ship with 2,000 people coming in. And then you leave that set in there, look. You leave that set in there. You can't take that out. 
What's that? Oh, no. What is that, please? That's a hider. Is that tuna? That's a what? Yeah, fuck. A fucking tuna? That is a what? Oh, fuck me. And when was this last cleaned? That. Don't, 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 don't you dare try to tell me that was done from last night. Oh, no. God, no, God, no, 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 no. That, I missed. Wow, what a mess. If there's one thing you're going to have to learn, get cleaning, Mark. You've got no idea on the hundreds of thousands of dollars that you've pissed through your hands. Oh, bye, oh, bye, oh, bye, oh, bye. I'm absolutely speechless. The whole setup is dysfunctional. The walk-in. A walk-in packed full of shit. We're not talking hundreds of dollars. We're talking about thousands of dollars. Do you have any idea what the real costs are? What's the total purchasing? What's your labor cost? What's our break even a week? You don't know. No, I do. Oh, come on. Don't you do the books? Does anybody know what the break even is? We should know. We don't. You don't know. Not one of you, eight years down the line, know what you need to take to survive. I'm fucked. No wonder you run out of money. All right, I'm gonna clean. No, Just don't ask. It's gonna be a, a few hours job, yeah. All right. I'm floored. You know, there's a lot of things that we thought we knew and we don't know. That's dangerous. That's when you fail, when you don't know what you should know. Jeff Ramsey knows that Barefoot Bob's is in need of a major turnaround. <laughs> Please go and take a seat there. He also realizes that this is going to only happen if Mark and Lisa are united. Yesterday was a real tough day. I want to talk about your relationship, because that's paramount, because you're not partners in terms of investors. Mm -hmm. You're husband and wife. Okay. And it's easy to forget. Lisa, go back to the beginning. The first time you met, you know, a lot in common. Mm -hmm. Just had a lot of laughs together. We had the same personality. He kind of got me. Great. But here's the ironic scenario. You've gone off in different directions. This business needs both of you. And unless both of you get on the same page, that's it. It's game over. Yeah. Lisa, the balance isn't equal. I want to do I want to turn around. You sure? Positive. 100%. 100%. You know, think we just need to work more as a team. I need to focus on getting that back of the house properly run. I want you to do the front of the house, and we need to talk about it. You know, you're, you're my partner, who I want to be with forever, you know? Let's just really work together on this, and let's make it happen. We can do it. I'm excited to turn around. Right, now I've got a smile, good. That's right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, there, bang. Done. I feel optimistic. I know I can commit myself a little bit more to coming back here. <laughs> now Mark and I just need to work it out rather than just walking in separate directions. This has been 
if anything, has made me realize how much I love you. Love you too. Getting this off my chest about the problems that Lisa and I were having is just, it's relieving. We're both on board. And just to hear it from her, that's comforting. So the one thing that stood in my mind that shocked me is when I asked you, what was your break even? And your response was? I don't know. But there's one thing I've got to emphasize is that this business needs to be run like a business. And you don't need a general manager. That's not going to make this place work. You don't need a new chef. What you need right now, urgently, is an accountant. And here he is. Please say good morning to Tim McLennan. Are you well? Yes. Please, good to see you. Good to see you, Mark. Hello, Mark. And this is Lisa. Hi, nice to meet you. This man knows how to run a business. I've arranged for him to be with you as your consultant. He'll put a business plan together and he'll come up with a budget in place. That's what we've always needed. <laughs> a lot of times people are good at what they do, but running the business itself, you have to bring in some help. Yeah. Lisa, I've never seen you look so happy. I'm giddy. <laughs> good. Probably the most excited person to ever see an accountant. The business was just so mind boggling that I didn't think I'd ever be able to get a handle on it myself. Use this time, guys. This man's key. Moving forward. Thank you. With Lisa and Mark seemingly on the same page. Mark and Chris, let's go. Chef Ramsay turns his attention to fixing the food, beginning with two New England classics. An amazing clam chowder, followed by stunning fish and chips. Okay. Okay, let's get the chowder going first. Hot oil first, just a little touch. Bacon in. Yeah. Really fry that off. Fish and chips into the bowl. I've got my vodka, a touch of honey. I've never had this kind of guidance from a Michelin rated chef ever. And just a chance to learn from Chef Ramsay. In? It's a very special deal. Very good. You're gonna really taste the clams. What you haven't got is a taste of flour. Let's take them out and give the girls a taste. I believe I lost focus, and I believe that my food started to show it. Delicious fish and chips done with a little bit of nostalgia. A delicious clam chowder, would you believe? Ooh. Have a taste. Having Lisa back in the front of the house is gonna let me focus on, on our food and what needs to be done to operate a proper kitchen. It's gonna be nice to have my partner back. Oh my God, that's just so good. Awesome. This is amazing. Clearly, one of the biggest problems at this beachside eatery is the dramatic drop-off in the winter months. Okay, come and stand over here, please. But Chef Ramsay has a plan to turn that around. Now, here's the thing. We think that the summer is the only time we can survive, and the winter, well, we just got to accept it. No, when you consider all these little towns surrounding you, collectively, you've got 100,000 locals. So tomorrow, we're relaunching this place with a much smaller menu. But today, we're going to do a little marketing. We're going to go and reach out to the locals. So we've got some hip T-shirts that are going to get that message out there, loud and clear. Get these on. Let's go, let's go, let's go. What a gorgeous little town. Beautiful. I'm thinking of moving here. You should. I'm Lisa, I'm the owner, and I'm very proud of it. That's <laughs> very good. Isn't it good? I never eat clam chowder. No. And you like it? I love good. it. That's great. That's good. Look at this. She's killing it. You want some chowder down here? I would love some. Spare for Bob's. So we got Gordon Ramsay helping us out, redoing our menu. It is great that Lisa's out getting her hands dirty, getting to promote her own restaurant. Best really? fish and chips around. I don't think I've ever seen her this involved and this excited. You guys should come down and visit us. Oh, we definitely will. It's absolutely oh, sure. amazing. Thank you. I'll come back and get All right, you thank you. Okay. We'll see you at uh, Barefoot Bob's. Well, yesterday was a day in which the word was spreading about the new Barefoot Bobs. Overnight, Chef Ramsay's team was miraculously creating it. Welcome. Oh my. Oh my. Oh my God. Oh my God. Why? Oh my God. Wow. Oh my God. Awesome. Oh, this is beautiful. I love it. We have created a true beachside eatery. Wow. wow. Oh, my God. Man, it's beautiful. Gone is that hideous tiki bar theme and that ridiculous wall covering. You've got the walls painted blue and white, resembling the water. Gorgeous! With a strong identity, that strong nautical oh, wow. feel. From tiki to shiki, let me tell you. It's beautiful. This is by far the coolest, hippest, Greatest place to be in Hull now. Wow, what this is amazing. Plus. This is what we dreamed this place was going to be. This is it. Is it Mark? This is what we envisioned when really? we bought it. I couldn't be happier about 
being an owner of Barefoot Bob's right now, this was our dream, but even my dream didn't look this good. <laughs> now, one more thing. I would like to introduce you to a state-of-the-art POS system from POS Lavo and Zephyr Hardware. Oh, our old POS system was like a dinosaur. It was horrid. Now it is unreal. It's the best thing I've ever seen in my life. It's going to be operated by wireless remotes. Oh, Lisa, here's the good news. This baby here will give you an hour-by-hour -hour record of your infantry, your purchasing. Every ounce of data can be fed straight back to Tim McLennan. <laughs> Everything's amazing, and this is just over the top. <laughs> nice. nice. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs> so happy you're happy. It's just nice to see her happy. This is going to help her want to be a part of what we're doing here. I think this is going to give Lisa and I a fresh start. Thank you very much. You good? Yeah. This yeah. is awesome. To go along with the revamped dining room. Take a menu and pass one along, please. Chef Ramsay has overhauled the menu with a focus and a finesse of the dishes that New England is famous for. The menu's been condensed, and all the hits have been put on to one menu, but refined. Ooh. OK, Whoa. what do you think? Beautiful. Let's start off the top of the menu. Raw, oysters, half on the shell, mignonette pepper, cucumber. Next day, you've got crab cake. How can you be on the beach with no stunning crab cake? Old bay, onion, celery, and mayo. Simple, delicious. Next, you've got lobster roll. Poached lobster with a mayonnaise, a semi-brioche roll, so with a nice tarragon. We're here to make money, not lose it, right, Lisa? Right. If you've got the quality, then less is more, let me tell you. Good. Dig in, guys. This is delicious. Oh, my God, it's amazing. Happy? This is unbelievable. <laughs> All right, you guys, these are mine. Don't touch me. <laughs> I will stab you with my fork. <laughs> Customers will be down the street, around the corner, trying to get in here to get this food. Get away from my corn. Are you guarding that? <laughs> <laughs> With the grand reopening just minutes away, the staff is anxious to open the doors. It's just going to be a gigantic change, you know, and everybody here knows it. But Lisa's brother, Robbie, this isn't going to work, has his doubts. We just lost all of our customer base. Gone. I'm pretty upset about the whole situation. I think the look is a terrible change. <laughs> no one's going to come in and watch a fucking game here. When I look around at the restaurant, I don't see barefoot bobs. Now you walk in, you think you're at some hoity-toity little yacht club. It's the complete opposite of who we are. Truthfully, I think it sucks. I don't know where the blender went. Oh, here it yeah, is. Yeah, you are going to be getting all the frozen drinks. I don't think Robbie. we should do frozen drinks anymore. We're not that kind of restaurant anymore. This bar has no chance of running smoothly tonight. That's it. I'm done. I quit. I'm sorry. It's not like the guy lives here. The guy was here for three days. Doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about. Robbie! Find yourself a new bar manager. Minutes before Barefoot Bob's is ready to open for relaunch. This isn't going to work. Lisa's brother, Robbie, is not exactly pleased with Chef Ramsay's changes. Find yourself a new bar manager. Where is he going now? We get people drunk and we feed people. We're not a five-star restaurant. Is Ramsay going to be here tonight? Because <laughs> Really good words for him. Hey, thanks for fucking up our restaurant. Oh, how are you doing? You all set? I think so. Yeah? Good. Lee's ready? Ready. Good, good, good. Bobby, happy? I hope this works, man. Oh dear. Hey, what do you mean hope? Hey. I hope. Talk to me. Come here. What's wrong? Uh, why so negative? You've got a face on you like you've just given up. I'm not giving up, man. You haven't given up. What's the matter? I'm just very skeptical. How did you don't skeptical know? Skeptical about what? Just the surroundings. Well, I'm worried about our, uh, our old customers coming back. Really? Yeah. They're a meat and potatoes guy. Have they're, you been they're... drinking? No. I mean, how arrogant are you? I'm not arrogant at all. Should I give you a little insight if it doesn't work? The restaurant closes, your sister divorces, and then you pick up the pieces. Where the fuck are you going to work? Who's going to employ you? I don't know if you know what side your bread is buttered on. But what I'm asking is a fucking commitment of 100%, especially in front of your team. Exactly. All right, buddy. Come on. I don't even want to shake hands. All right. You've upset me. A fucking joke. Fuck him. Mark, two seconds. What the fuck's going on out there? He says things aren't going to work. Does he have any idea where we are financially? Yes. If anything, he should be sleeping here to make sure this exactly. thing works. Exactly. He has to be on board. Let me talk to him. I don't understand how he's not on board. That's really upsetting. What keeps us alive, we, we lost. No, we didn't. 
What we had didn't work. Change has to happen. We gotta fucking do it. Do you understand? I'm not gonna let this opportunity go. This is what we gotta do. I'm not running that restaurant the way it was. I'm not gonna sit and watch this restaurant continue to go into the ground. All of us have to be on the same page. We can't have that attitude going forward. I have a short tempo. Change doesn't just sit well with me. But at the end of the day, if Mark and Lisa believes in it, then they're my family and I'm behind them 100%. Three weeks from now, and we're still packed and it's working? You know, we, I know. You, you're wrong. I'm in 110%. Let's do this. Let's make it work. That's what I want to hear. That's what I want to hear. Welcome to the new and improved Barefoot Pops. With Mark in charge of the kitchen. Let's go. Right this way, folks. <laughs> and Lisa controlling the front of house. Go, enjoy, folks. Tonight's relaunch will be the couple's first big test. So it's three chowders to start. Can we start with the clean strips? OK. How easy is that, though? Amazing. I love the new POS system. It's just going to make every single part of the restaurant run together. And I'm sending more all in. All in. All right, here we go. I got a crab cake. Crab cake, curd chef. I want to fire a big boy. I want to fire a fish and chips, please. He's got the chowder. And that's working. That's working. Good. Fish and chips. Good. With the first orders leaving the kitchen. To come bearing gifts. What did you enjoy? Barefoot Bob's is off to a solid start. And everything seems to be going according to plan. I can eat probably two of these. Mm, this is delicious. But an hour into service. Order it. There's a flood of tickets coming into the kitchen. Two scallops I want to fire up, a fish and chips I want to fire up a big boy. And Mark and the cooks are completely backed up. Another crab cake fired. I'm waiting for a big buoy. It's coming right now. You guys got, got a lot of gold coming up? Urgently, please. Did you put it up? You, you don't have it? You don't have that at all? What happened with that calamari and clam section that I threw in 45 minutes ago? Listen, that one's coming. No, because you're not getting the first calamari because my table's about to leave. OK, so it's everyone in my fucking bar. Fuck me. With everyone on edge in the kitchen. What time are we seeing? I don't know, but we got oysters. You don't have to cook them, do you? The diners are getting restless, and the relaunch is at a crisis point. Do you want to go? Let's give them a couple more minutes. You can see the temperatures rising from the diners. Um, I have to jump in and just kind of stop things for a few. Stop taking food orders right now. Stop taking food orders. I need the calamari, I need the clam. I called it. All right, nobody's going to order food for a while. Lisa made an executive decision to tell everyone to stop taking tables and just slow everything down. Can I help you at all? Yes, please, run this to The chicken's working, right? Chicken's all set. Chicken, done. Fish and chips, done. Oh, no. Looking good, guys. Samantha's coming up right now. There's a slip. Oh, there you go. Uh, you just saved again. 72, I got this. Looks good, right? Yep. Nice. With Lisa taking the initiative and control of the dining room. This is good. We're OK. Beautiful. That's going to get us back on track. Mark and the kitchen staff now have time to regroup and get orders out. We can order food? Yes. There we go, folks. Sorry for the hold up. Those are really different. Those are good. Everyone likes everything out there, guys. Looks good. Having Lisa's support gives me a lot of room. I can grow back here, I can get better. Let's fire off a fish and chips, and we're done. I look forward to having her back in the restaurant. Bye-bye. Tonight, clearly, we had our growing pains, but we didn't give up. The spirit was here, and we fought all night. Think of where we've come. I think we got through it. Good. Robbie, you were against it, but change is for the better. Let me tell you, you've got to give it your all. I will. Stay close to Mark and Lisa. They need that support, let me tell you. I'd like to spend a couple of minutes with Mark and Lisa on my own. Um, a big thank you to you all. Well thank done. You. Thank you. Excellent, well done. Yeah, Mr. Skeptical. Chef Ramsey, thank you. That was wrong. I am very, very proud of you both because you pulled it off and you stuck in there. You. Mark, you don't know how strong you are. You are a real leader, and when the chips are down, you hang on in there, and you didn't buckle. Well done. Thank you. Don't turn back. That's right. Stick together. Yeah, and it will work. Good luck. Thank you very Good much. Thank you so Thank much. You. I'm looking forward to the future. I know I'm in love with my wife. I know she's in love with me. Good luck. It's wonderful. Good night. Good night. Have a good night. Thank you. We took a shack on the beach and transformed it into a restaurant that can become a destination for tourists and locals. And Mark and Lisa may not have known their bottom line, but the true bottom line is they need each other to succeed. Get me the hell out of here.
Wow, what a beach. In the days that followed, it quickly became clear that Chef Ramsay's many changes had the restaurant heading in the right direction. We were out of the oysters, so I gave him a scallop It's fine, it's fine, it's right. no problem. I love you, you're the best. <laughs> And with accountant Tim McClellan helping with the finances. We're going to save some money for the winter, and we'll do the hard work we need to to get it done. It's going to help Lisa a lot, too. She's really looking forward to working with you. The future is definitely looking brighter. Right, this is good. We're OK. How you doing, folks? Mark finally got what he always wanted, his wife Lisa working alongside him once again. I love you so much. I love you.